Today we're going to take a quick look at a quote to cash workflow within Epicor ERP. This is one of the most critical business flows for any manufacturing company and having an application like Epicor where everything from quoting, sales order processing, production planning, scheduling, manufacturing, data collection, shipping, invoicing, and finally receiving payment, having that all embedded within one single application can really streamline and simplify your business processes. Let's have a look at how that looks within Epicor. Notice that I have a grouping of different screens that we're going to take a look at to run through this quote to cash process. The first screen we're going to take a look at is the screen inside of Epicor called Opportunity Quote Entry. When I go ahead and click on that tile here, you notice it opens up this screen and I have a quote that I've started for a particular customer. You can see that I have a quote created for this particular customer, Addison. Down below you can see the different products that I'm producing quotes for for this particular customer. One of them, as you can see, happens to be a, uh, a catalog product, if you will, product that we've manufactured maybe many times before, have a part master created for. In those type of scenarios, we might have a defined price for that particular product. We may also have quantity breaks for that given product. If we have a customer that we'd like to communicate that when you buy one, we're going to charge you $23. If you buy $100, we'll charge you $20. If you buy $500, we'll charge you $15. Taking advantage of some economies of scale of larger production runs tend to cost us less money, we can go ahead and charge our customers accordingly. Now, quoting can be fairly simple inside of Epicor, and you can see you could have just products like that. But you can also see down below here that I have a custom product here, right? something that I've called a custom part, which is a custom part for Addison. This product actually doesn't happen to be a part master record inside of my system. So it's something that I can actually quote a customer for, something that maybe we've never done before, never even created before. We can build that right into a quote inside of Epicor. We can include any details about that product, such as document attachments. As you can see here, maybe a customer has sent me a drawing file, maybe a Word document, an Excel file. We can link those right into transactions inside of Epicor. And if needed, I can go ahead and open them up directly from here as well. This is a PDF document. This one happens to be a SOLIDWORKS drawing file. We can go ahead and open those up directly from that transaction. So whether I'm the initial person that's attached those into that transaction initially, or whether I'm a person reviewing this quotation, if there's a process that I need to do, I can go ahead and quickly view those documents directly within that transaction. Now, back to where we were talking about this custom product for Addison. If we're interested in a scenario where we do a bit more complexity as a part of our quoting, we can go ahead and build in some manufacturing details here. And, and what this is going to help us with, if we're in a scenario where we need to derive an estimate for what this is going to take us to build, we can go ahead and actually pull those details right into this quoting process to help determine an accurate price for this product based on markup or gross profit margin that we might want to attain. Now, how does that come to be? If we move over to the line details about this custom product, you can see that there's a tab called Manufacturing Details. Now the manufacturing details inside of Epicor are going to contain potentially any bill of material options, any bill of operations that we'd like to include, and potentially if you have uh, nested subassemblies or indented bills of materials, we can house those right inside of the quote as well. Now the big benefit in this is that they can be pulled from multiple different sources, it could be pulled from previous quotes, previous jobs, bill of materials that already exist as a product inside of the system, a defined part master. We're able to pull from any of those sources as a starting point, but we can also do things like add additional options or add additional operations or materials, anything that we might want to do here to help us again pull and create an accurate estimate, we're able to build this structure out. Now again, the big value in this is that based on the costing details that exist inside of the system, we're able to basically see all of the costing details for this individual product and help us work towards a defined markup or profitability percentage and help with the system recommending what the unit price with commission should be. In this particular case, you can see the system is recommending that with my commission that I should be charging $1,700, $73.22 to get that 30% markup across the board. Because this is a product I feel pretty good about, maybe it's not a competitive situation, I'm going to go ahead and charge $1,800 to the customer for this particular product. Now, as some time maybe has gone by, we're going to wait for this quote to go out to the customer and maybe come back. Maybe they want to confirm that they, they do want to go ahead and purchase the product or multiple different products on the quote. One of the main benefits of Epicor as a whole is that it is again embedded. So transitioning from one place to another is going to be very simple. As we're taking a look at this opportunity quote entry screen, one of the things that can very easily happen is I can go ahead and convert this quotation 
directly into an order from this screen. So if I move up to the Actions menu, I can go up to the Quote Options here, and I can go ahead and select Create Sales Order. So if the customer has called me over the phone or sent me a confirmation of this quote, all I have to do is simply click and create a sales order from here. Now it's going to ask me some relevant details about the sales order, such as when does the customer requiring these products. I can go ahead and select the need by date that the customer is asking for these items on. I can go ahead and enter in the customer's purchase order number here as well. I can select options here and maybe override certain defaults if I choose to about how we want to ship that product, things along those lines, and I can simply go ahead and create that sales order. Now you'll notice I also have the option to select which options maybe I do or don't want to include on the order as well. So if I've quoted out seven different products on the order, maybe they're only asking for one or two, I can select certain options of things that they either do or don't do not want on that particular order. Now sales order 5583 has been created. Let's go take a look. So now I'm going to move over to the order entry screen, so the sales order processing screen inside of Epicor, and let's go ahead and pull up that sales order. As you can see, all of the relevant details from that quotation are now coming over to the screen here as we can see. The details about the products that have been quoted, if I expand out the details off to the side, one of the main benefits as well is that all of the document attachments that have been included about that custom product also have come forward onto this sales order now. And you'll see they transition throughout the system as well. Now changing hats for a moment, we have a sales order inside of the system. This product here, and obviously this pro custom product here, is going to be something that's going to be made to order. So made directly to this particular sales order, not something we're going to be able to necessarily pull from inventory. right? If I go ahead and move over, there's a screen inside of Epicor, again changing hats for a moment, I'm going to open up a screen here called the Planning Workbench. And the Planning Workbench is a screen, intuitively as it might sound, uh, where a production planner might come and be able to see all of the different things that they need to go ahead and plan, whether it be new production requirements or whether it be changes that need to occur either based on date or quantity, we're going to be able to see those, those things showing up in this particular queue. Now directly down below, the sales order we just created is now showing up down in the queue down below. So automatically based on that order being entered into the system, new demand for make to order requirements are feeding this production planner's workbench. Now the production planner, all he has to do is go ahead and click the create job button. If he goes ahead and clicks create job, very similar to that quote to order conversion process, we now have a very similar screen where we're being prompted for some options. Right? Do we want the order number to look like the job number in a make to order environment? Many times that is the case. Do, would we like to pull in the manufacturing details? Would we like to schedule that job? So have the system backward schedule that requirement from the need by date. Would we like to release that order out? Go ahead and print off any of the details. If we have a job traveler or any sort of report that we'd like to go along with this, we can go ahead and print that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and create that job. And what you're going to see is we've got a brand new job number that is created scheduled, released out to the shop floor with all of the details that were entered in previously about that particular order and previously the quote. So if we take a look, we can see that we have a job that's scheduled to start now on um, January 12th based on a completion date to complete on the 19th to reach the customers required by date of the 20th, which we had entered in originally on the sales order. If we take a look over in the tree off to the side, we can see any bill of material requirements we have, we can see any operational requirements that we have. You can see that this particular one is going to run through a series of different operations, going to be sent out for subcontracting, as you can see intuitively by this little operation here that's going to apply a little fork in the road. You can also see that we have a material that's required here. Now again, based on the difference that we saw inside of the quotation, we were looking at that custom product, you can see that that could be much more detailed. If we had sub-assemblies or multiple different materials that would be required, things along those lines were able to see that directly there. Now again, changing hats for a moment, we have a job that's now planned for production inside of the system. It's been released out to the shop floor, as we can see by the little details off to the side. We're going to transition for a moment now over to Epicor MES. Epicor MES is our manufacturing execution system. And this is meant for the shop floor users to be able to record their details inside of the system. For folks that are interested in job costing, real-time visibility to where we are from a production standpoint, this MES menu is really going to help out a lot in terms of allowing them to enter in details, but feeding the Epicor ERP screens with that updated detail. 
So a couple of things we're going to do from here. If I'm a production employee and I've now gotten that job traveler out on the shop floor and I now want to go ahead and work on this particular job, maybe starting that first operation, I'm going to go ahead and select start production activity. I'm going to go ahead and select the job that I'm working on, either scanning that in, barcode details, go ahead and select which operation I'm working on, and I'm going to go ahead and be on my way with selecting starting that operational step. So I'm told the system right now that at 1.41 p.m. I've now started working on that particular activity. Again, feeding the job costing side of the system uh, with real-time accurate details of where we are in process. Now I'm going to move over to the Material tab for a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and issue material. So I'm going to tell the system that we're now consuming some of this stainless steel sheet required on this job in the background. We're going to go ahead and issue that material to this particular work order. So you can see what's required, what's been previously issued. We're going to again just tell the system that we're taking one sheet out of inventory. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So we've now taken that material out of inventory, consumed it in work and process. Now that we've let this job run for a few moments, we're going to go ahead and tell the system that we're done with this particular activity. So out on the shop floor, I'm done with that particular activity. I've completed the quantity of one that I need. You can see that it's allowing me to flag that it's complete as well. I can go ahead and say OK. Now a couple of things we'll notice right out of the gate. If we go back and take a look at that job, if somebody was interested in the status of this job or if the customer had called and said, what is the status of that job? You know, you're supposed to get it done for us by the 19th. Where is it in the process? As soon as I go ahead and refresh this screen, we're able to see that this operation has been completed. This material has also been consumed. And we're able to see that directly on the job. Now through other views and reports, we're able to see accurate job costing information, efficiencies, or all things we're storing as a part of that process. Now we're going to move back to MES for a moment. And after this job has been completed, we're going to be able to ship this product directly out. So I'm going to move over to, again to the MES menu, and maybe this is a different user, maybe at a different terminal, utilizing this screen a little bit differently. But as you can see, we can process customer shipments and a number of different other transactions through this particular screen as well. So again, maybe I'm out at the shipping and receiving station, and I'm going to go ahead and process this customer shipment here. So I'm going to open up this particular screen, and you're going to see that I'm going to be able to record all of the details about this particular shipment right through this particular transaction. Now, one of the things you'll notice that is a little bit different and a big benefit of Epicor is that we're able to ship directly out of work and process. So as I talked about before for companies that are make to order and maybe do some complex things around quoting, this particular process is going to speak to that as well, where I haven't taken any products from that job, completed finished goods, and taken them into inventory so that I can ship them. I'm actually able to do that directly from work and process. So I'm going to go ahead and produce this shipment. And you can see it's pulled in the job details. We also have within Epicor an embedded manifesting system. So I'm able to go ahead and communicate with carrier services such as FedEx or UPS or USPS from directly within our application. So I can go ahead and communicate with a scale or enter in details of how much this product with the packaging weighs, say that this particular one weighs 35 pounds, and now I can go ahead and tell the system that I want to close that package out, and I want to go ahead and freight that package. So I'm going directly out to FedEx, getting details about that particular package, pulling back a tracking number, of which I can track just by clicking the tracking details here if I choose to, going out to FedEx, also pulling in the manifesting details. So I can see that we've basically pulled in a, a shipment here which is going to incur a $22.63 passed on to the particular customer, which it's also added now onto the packing slip. So if we go ahead and tell the system that this particular package has now been shipped, that is now going to go ahead and either automatically invoice this particular shipment or queue up an invoice uh, to be created for this particular order. So now let's tr transition back to the main menu here, and we're going to go ahead and open up AR invoice entry. So now I'm potentially a person sitting in AR. No more need for a person in shipping to bring up all of the packing slips for the day to let the person know that things have been shipped out. I'm simply able to go in, create a new invoice group, and now go ahead and pull in all of the things that are ready to be invoiced. So I can come up to the Actions menu, go ahead and get Shipments, and now I'm able to see our shipment that we just shipped out here against PO1000, which was produced today. I'm now able to go ahead and produce an invoice for that. We now have a brand new invoice created. 
with all of the product details, all of the information that we want to communicate to the customer, including the manifesting charge and everything along those lines as well. So we have our $23, $22 charge on there also. Now let's move in and receive payment from our customer. So we're moving into cash receipt entry. And let's say that we've gone ahead and received a check from our customer in the amount of that $45 against that particular invoice. So we're able to record their check details, how much that particular check was for, the invoice number detail if we have it. And you can see it's pulling back the customer detail and everything like that along this particular payment. That completes the Epicor quote to cash process. As you can see, a very streamlined process, very easy to use. All the screens look exactly the same and that is a big product of having the product be embedded. This has been a quote to cash workflow within Epicor ERP. Thank you for viewing.